I've suffered severe brain uh, injury. I want to volunteer. Logan Paul wants to enter the Neuralink trials, but would he even be able to participate? It has electrodes that'll connect to your brain. Make would he actually benefit from a Neuralink implant at this stage? Probably in about six months, we should be able to have a first Neuralink in a human. I've heard about that. So Hell yeah, oh, yeah, it turns you oh, into yeah. half machine, so you know everything. Well, you can so, I would like it so what is fact and what is fiction regarding this technology? So they send it to your house and you attach it to your head and it cuts a little piece of your skull out. <laughs> it's a, a, trip, a chip. There's a lot of rumors going on about Neuralink and brain-computer interface technology in general. So let's take a look at what's been discussed on the Impulsive podcast and try to clear things up for everyone. You can connect uh, via Bluetooth to an iPhone. This is true. The implant will be able to communicate with your smartphone and other computers through Bluetooth. That comes a in a package. They send it to your house and you attach it to your head and it cuts a little piece of your skull out. <laughs> it's so a, it's a trip, a chip. I'm not sure if Mike was joking around, but Neuralink will never be sending their BCI chip to your front door. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it turns you oh, into yeah. half machine so you know everything. Well, you no, can I would like it done to me. Implantable BCI is an incredible technology that's already allowing people to control robots with their minds and walk after being previously paralyzed. But to get direct two-way communication with computers, there are three specific hurdles that we need to overcome and we will identify in this video before Logan can connect his brain to the internet. As a US Navy trained medical doctor and neurotechnologist, I've been thinking intensely about these problems for the last 10 years. On this channel, we've had Ryan Tanaka, who works specifically with Neuralink on their patient recruitment, Harrison Canning, who's the chief science correspondent for BlackRock Neurotech, one of Neuralink's competitors who already has patients controlling robotic limbs with their minds, and Professor Nita Farinhani, author of Battle for Your Brain, who's been in the news a lot lately talking about the ethical issues regarding regarding the rapidly advancing field of BCI. New technologies to observe and track human thoughts. Professor Nita Farhani. Professor at uh, Duke University, Nita Farahani. It's here. Don't dismiss this. It's here. You're not going to believe this. I don't believe this. But sadly, it's true. Let's get into it. For people who've never been thinking about neurotechnology, who've never been exposed to neurotechnology, I think it's just so incredibly disconcerting for people. So if you want to keep learning about BCI, please subscribe so we can continue getting access to world-class technology and experts for you. Elon Musk just got Neuralink approved by the FDA. Yes, after extensive testing in pigs and monkeys, Neuralink has been able to show the FDA that they can implant their chip into the motor cortex of animal models with their surgical robot. This has to be done under sterile conditions to avoid life-threatening infections, so Neuralink will never be sending a chip in the mail to your front door. They were able to demonstrate mapping limbs in pigs and mind pong control in the rhesus monkeys. The concepts will be translated into human trials to hopefully restore communication pathways in paralyzed patients through implants to the human motor cortex. The patients would be able to control a cursor on a computer monitor, which would allow them to navigate the internet or slowly type messages. These brain patterns also could be used to control robotic limbs or restore some movement functionality in paralytic limbs with certain patients. There is a sign-up page for the trials on the Neuralink website as advertised by Ryan Tanaka, but being that Logan is not disabled, he would not be able to participate in this first phase of the trial. However, this does not count him out from volunteering down the line when they've advanced their technology further. Elon Musk is talking about removing a part of your skull to insert a chip called the Neuralink. While by no means is restoring motor function to these patients easy, in fact, it's incredible, it's still less complicated than a two-way communication with computers, like what they're talking about on the Impulsive podcast. They're gonna go, Wait, you had to touch your phone to use it? Wait a second, your phone wasn't in your brain? <laughs> our first challenge is output. How can we train computers to read our minds? First, we need to actually train AI to understand our thoughts. And this is where measurement modality is really important. EEG can be used to track sleep and wakefulness and test for cognitive fatigue. There's a lot of utility, but it's not precise enough to actually read our thoughts. 
We can use fMRI scanners now to decode and listen into what people are listening to or translate what they are watching into text. But these are big bulky machines that cost millions of dollars. There is hope to miniaturize the functions of the MRI machine into helmets that can read blood flow patterns using a technology called FNIRS, like what's used in this kernel flow helmet. And this seems to be a promising and viable path forward. But how you would do that with an implant is less clear at this point. The implant has to be put into a precise location and generally will be limited in function depending on where it is implanted. All of the human implants so far have been in the motor cortex to facilitate limb control. There are electrical signals for mouth and tongue muscle control in the motor cortex that could be tapped for thought projection to a computer. But this would limit us to the speed of audible speech and would likely require the subject to subtly mouth the words to make it work. For what Elon is talking about, we'd have to try something different. If you can solve the, the data rate issue, and you're especially output but input to, then you can improve the symbiosis that is already occurring between man and machine. To get thought output to be faster than the speed of speech, we might need to tap the speech generation part of the brain called Broca's area. But if you're just getting signals from a small implant in the area, the question is, will you get enough information to be able to project a full range of thoughts properly? No one really knows at this point how much information we would need from Broca's area by using an implant, as opposed to using a scanner helmet that could cover a broader range of brain circuits. So that covers information leaving our brains, but what about information coming back from the internet if we're going to achieve two-way communication? What? physics would we have to use to allow a machine to convey information to our brains from the internet? Magnetic pulses can affect general brain waves to make you sleepy or more awake, but they're too broad to communicate nuanced information like language. This ultrasound setup that I just tested in LA can create even more focused signals to create different meditative states, but again, it's not precise enough to convey language. It seems that we would need some kind of direct electrical stimulation of either the visual cortex in the back of the brain to convey pictures or the language centers or auditory centers to have information projected into the the brain as words. Personally, I think we'll be able to do this with time, but it's going to take a lot of progress before we get there. And the third challenge would be training our brain to interpret these signals. No doubt the input signal would be very confusing at first until we trained our brains to interpret the incoming information. And I picture my kids' kids and me having to talk to them about the technology we use to capture and interact and they're going to go, Wait, you had to touch your phone to use it? Wait a second, your phone wasn't in your brain? <laughs> now here's the irony. Despite me bashing Logan and Mike a little bit in this video, this is potentially possible. If you consider the average age of men having kids these days at 30 years old, that puts us at almost 2065 by the time that Logan's grandchild is potentially 10 years old. Futurists like Ray Kurzweil have predicted that we will have high bandwidth BCIs by the mid 2030s which is quite striking. That isn't our grandchildren being 10 years old, that's our children being teenagers. That's my daughter being a teenager when this is taking place. Even if it takes a little bit longer, it's potentially before our grandchildren really become of age. And with all the progress that I've seen over the years, it makes me think that it's actually possible. And even if high bandwidth two-way communication is the holy grail of BCI technologies, we are still going to see a lot of functionality come out of these technologies that's not necessarily at that level. I've suffered severe brain uh, injury. I want to volunteer. <laughs> it can detect early illness. It can find out if you're at risk for certain cancers or if you know, you're being affected by CTE or whatever, right? Logan, I know you hit your head as a kid and you might think that Neuralink would help you, but I think those benefits are a ways off and there's a lot of technologies right now that would be much better used to you than Neuralink. If you're concerned about a diagnosis, you really need to look at overall global patterns of brain function rather than tracking information from a small limited region like the motor cortex. You can track your sleep with the Muse headband to see if you are getting properly restored at night. You can do focused neurofeedback exercises for your attention like with this FNIRS device called Mendy. And maybe look into red light therapy like what Neuronic or Sensei are offering in order to encourage your neurons and other brain cells to produce more ATP for better 
better energy. And thanks for watching audience. If you want to learn more about how BCI is currently being used in the world, click this video here and I'll see you on the other side.